I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on algebra. For some of you, this could be the very first video on understanding algebra. Well, our idea has always been to bombard you with a lot of technical words and scare you. If you are really scared of algebra, you are not the only one, right? People like me were in the same boat. Normally, when we talk about algebra, we'll look into these terms, which are open sentences, closed sentences, equations, inequality, one variable, two variable, solving, open sentence, solution, replacement set, solution set, and so on. Right. So these are some terms which I have mentioned here, uh, which are kind of scary. But I'll make an attempt to make them very, very simple for you so that you really start loving algebra. It'll no more be a problem for you. Let me begin with where the arithmetic ends and algebra begins. A simple example could be, let us say 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. This is arithmetic. All numbers, operators equal to sign, all this is arithmetic. On the other hand, if I change one of these number to a variable we'll call or a symbol, let us say I write 6 plus x equals to 10, right? This small change is what is called algebra. So that is the movement from arithmetic to algebra. So this number here, instead of number, any number. So x is any number. And then we'll write here where x is any number. Uh, and then we say, well, that means x is a variable, right? x is a variable. So any number means it can vary. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or whatever. Correct? So that is the basic concept. So as soon as we introduce you to some symbols in any equation, for that matter, in any inequality also, then it becomes algebra. So that is basic. Correct? I could also write here that 6 plus 5 is greater than 10, right? And uh, replace this statement by saying that 6 plus, we can write y is greater than 10. Now, in that case, y could also be any number. And we say y is a variable, right? So like this, we can introduce any number of symbols here and as we do that, we say we are stepping into algebra, leaving arithmetic, getting into algebra. So that is a very clear-cut change when we move into algebra, right? Now, how do they make things difficult for us? Let's try to understand that now. If I look into these equations or inequalities, like 6 plus 5 is greater than 10. We know it is true, right? 6 plus y is greater than 10, where y can be any number. Is it true or false? You can't say, correct? You can't say. It could be true. If y is 1, it is not true. But if y is 5 or 6, it is true. But y can have many values. Do you see that? Now, on the other hand, in this case of an equation, x plus 6 plus 4 equals to 10 is true. But 6 plus x, is that true? If x is 4, then it is true. But otherwise, it is not true. Perfect. So we can't say whether it is true or false. Now, let's look into another statement, which is like this. Let us say it is we are saying 6 plus 7 equals to 10. Well, 6 plus 7 equals to 10, we know is not true. 
okay but at least we know that it is not true in this case 6 plus x equals to 10 we are not sure so here we don't know not sure right we are not sure so whenever we talk about algebra we introduce variables and with the introduction of variables which could take any value any number we are never sure whether our equation or inequality that sign greater than represents inequality not an equation greater than right inequality could be true may or may not be true right so we are not sure so that leads to open sentences and closed sentences correct now when we say closed sentences that means we are sure sure for what sure for true or not true correct we are sure so both these things are closed sentences since we are sure that this is true this is not true but when we talk about open sentences in that case we don't know right so in this case we are not sure so there is a doubt there is always a doubt for some values it may work and for some values it may not work so if you have a scenario where we have a mathematical statement so these are all mathematical statements if you are sure that the statement is true or it is not true then it is a case of closed sentence but if you are not sure then it is a case of open sentence is that clear to you right so i hope this statement is very clear right now you know any sentence most of the time could be represented as an equation right so any sentence can be written as an equation uh, and you also know that a phrase leads to an expression right and a sentence leads to an equation yeah so it's good time to also talk about expression these are also technical terms which keep coming up for example i say sum of numbers now when i say sum of numbers it is an expression right we can say x plus y but we never said sum of number is what so it's a phrase right it's not a complete sentence on the other hand if I say sum of numbers is 10, in that case, I could write this as x plus y equals to 10. It becomes an equation. Do you see that? So, so an expression is a phrase. Equation is from a sentence, right? We could have uh, equation or even inequality. We could say uh, sum of numbers is less than 10. So in that case, we can use less than. It becomes an inequality, correct? So what I'm trying to say here is that when we have introduced these numbers, I mean the variables, the symbols, then we have entered into algebra. So algebra is with symbols. which we also call variables perfect so that leads to algebra now as soon as you get these symbols and variables you are not sure whether your equation or inequality will work or not so that leads to open sentence okay and open sentences could be of the type of an equation or an inequality as we just saw we could have one variable 
or we could have two variables or we could have many variables right we could have more than one variable so in any equation or inequality we'll have examples for each in this particular video now we'll say sometimes solving open sentence is to make it true so so we don't know that our equation will be true so we say the value of variable that makes the open statement I'm writing open statement because it could be an equation or inequality right mathematically true so in case of open statements when we say solution we are always looking for true right so not true are not the solutions right they now are closed sentences is that okay so so you understand what is finding solution is in algebra so solution is all those values which make the sentence true right so replacement set is another term which we'll get to know sometimes we have a defined values you have to pick from those replace and figure out whether it makes the sentence true or not right so replacement set is the choice of values choice of values you can pick from right uh, we'll also give it a technical name here we say this term as domain right so we say domain so domain is the replacement set or the values from where you can pick for the variable right so x will give you a replacement set only from that set you have to check the values that's what it means solution set means the combination of x and the the values in single variable solution set well let's do it like this solution set will be will be set of values for all variables that make equation that make open sentence true right so open sentence true now if you are looking into one variable then we have like x has these these values in case of two variables solution is given in ordered pairs right so we'll take this up later here in two variables solution set will be in ordered pairs because we have two variables right so two variables will be kind of x and y single variable will consider let us say x so i hope you get a point right so how to write the solution set all these solution sets will be written in braces in these curly brackets do you see that so that is again a nomenclature so you'll soon get used to it but this is just an you know overview of what we are getting into right now i think we have learned a lot it's time to have a small quiz and then we'll have few word problems to close the chapter on open sentence now let's try to take a quiz and digest whatever we have learned so far so now we'll take a quiz on what we have learned just to make sure that we really understood all these important concepts these are the questions based on open sentences and closed sentences just true or false one to six questions question number one i like you to pause the video copy these questions answer and then as i discuss check with my solutions right they're kind of tricky Question number one, 
2 plus 3 equals to 6 is a closed sentence. You have to write true or false. Question 2. 3 plus 7 equals to 10 is a closed sentence. Question 3. Square of 5 is 25 is an open sentence. Question 4. Sum of two numbers is greater than 1 is an open sentence. Question 5. 2x plus x equals to 3 is an open sentence. Question 6. 2x minus y is greater than 10 is an open sentence, right? So these are six questions for you. You don't have to solve them. You just have to write whether they are open sentence or not as mentioned, right? True or false. Okay, let's discuss. First, 2 plus 3 equals to 6. We are sure it is a it is not correct, right? So we are sure about the answer. Is that okay? Since we are sure it is a closed sentence, so that is true. Is it okay? So I'll write T for true. Is that clear? I hope you got it right. Very tricky. 3 plus 7 equals to 10. We are sure about it. So basically, you have to just check whether you are sure about it or not. If you are sure about it, it is a closed sentence. You get an idea, right? So now you can check your answers and, and then move forward. Question 3. Square of 5 is 25. We know 5 times 5 is 25 is an open sentence. Well, we are sure about it, right? Since we are sure about it, it is a closed sentence, not open sentence. And therefore, this is false. Sum of two numbers is greater than 1 is an open sentence. Well, most of the time, if you add numbers, even 1 plus 1 is 2. So we are saying sum of two numbers is greater than one is an open sentence. Are you sure? We are not sure. We are not sure. Why? Well, the numbers could be integers, the negative numbers. Do you get an idea, right? We didn't say that our replacement set is this. So we are not sure. They could be integers, right? negative numbers their sum will not be greater than one so this statement is false oh sorry sum of two numbers is greater than one is an open sentence we are not sure right so since we are not sure it is true correct it is an open sentence perfect question five 2x plus x equals to 3 is an open sentence. So as soon as we introduce these variables, we know it's algebra. It's all about not sure. So blindly you can say, yes, true. So it's simple. Do you see that? 2x minus y is an open sentence. True. Since we are talking about these variables and open sentences could have equations or inequalities does make sense right so I, I hope now it's perfectly simple easy so note open sentence can either be true or false that means not sure is it okay closed sentence is always true or false we are sure about it that is the major difference, right? So I hope this point is well taken. So let's move on and now understand the other terms which are well considered domain or the replacement set and we'll talk about solution and we'll talk about solution set in this particular question. You can pause the video, copy the question and then look into my suggestion. So as we discussed earlier, to find a solution, we are normally given a replacement set. And this replacement set is written in braces or curly brackets. We also refer to this as the domain. Is that okay? So these are the values which the variable can take. Now, second part of this I mean, the second statement here is find solution and then write the solution set for the following. Solution means 
for any open sentence we have to make the equation or inequality true right so so the replacement set which results into true is solution set right so that in short i hope is very clear right so let's read the question consider the domain or replacement set as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 find solution and then write the solution set for the following so we have three questions related the very first question here question number seven is three more than a number is ten so first it is a complete sentence we say three more than a number is ten so we'll normally take x as our variable right you could take n also in that case you have to define let the number be n is it okay so we are saying x by default is the variable so 3 more than the number means x plus 3. It is important to write plus 3, 3 more than. So whenever than comes, plus 3. Is means equal to, so we'll write equal to 10. So that becomes our equation, which is mathematical representation of this open sentence. Is that okay? 3 more than a number is 10. Now, we have to use this replacement set one by one we can verify what makes this equation true so now the question is what makes it true so when you substitute 7 here we know 7 plus 3 is 10 correct so that becomes a part of your solution. In this case, we have only one solution. And therefore, the solution set will be, let me write the solution set in red here. In curly brackets, 7 is my solution set. Is that okay? So that is my answer. Or solution set. Let's look into question number 8 now. So you understood the concept. You can solve them and then check with my solution. Now we are saying 6 plus x is greater than 10. Now you have to pick these values and try. So 6 plus 6 works. 6 plus 5 also works. 6 plus 4 does not. Because 6 plus 4 is 10, it is equal to, right? So we find that this time the solution set is the set of numbers which are 5 or more, right? So it is 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that becomes your solution set. Question number 9. Here we have two variables x and y. The question is 2x plus y equals to 10. So how do we do this? 2x plus y equals to 10. Now when we have two variables, in an open sentence then the solution is kind of slightly different let me rearrange this to make you understand we could write this as y equals to 10 minus 2x is it okay now replacement set is normally the value of x which we also call this as independent variable Uh, any one of these could be independent, right? So we are taking x as our independent variable. So we'll substitute one by one all these values here, right? And then calculate what y is. So let me make a table to make the things simpler, okay? So what we will do here is we'll write different values of x and calculate y. That's the whole idea, right? So let's say the values are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we'll also, we can make two columns. Okay. 
and then we'll take values 7, 8, 9. So if I substitute 1 here, what do I get the value of y? 10 minus 2, right? 10 minus 2. If I substitute 1 here, it becomes 10 minus 2, which is equal to 8. So 8 is the y value. If I substitute 2 here, it becomes 10 minus 4 equals to 6. If I substitute 3 here, it is 10 minus 6, which is equal to 4. If I substitute 4, then 10 minus 8, which is equal to 2. 5 will give us 0, right? But that is a valid value. 6 will give us 10 minus 12, which is negative 2. Right? So you could get negative answers. 7 will give us 10 minus 14, which is negative 4. And 8 will give us 10 minus 16, which is negative 6. And 9 will give us 10 minus 8, which is negative, I mean 18, which will give us negative 8. Do you see that, right? So, so in this case, that is the solution. So here, when we are walk, talking about two variables, in that case, answer will be written in ordered pairs, right? We'll write answer in ordered pairs. So, so our solution will be within curly brackets, we'll write each solution. So we have 1, 8. So 1 for x, 8 for y. Do you see that? 2, 6, 3, 4, separated by comma. Do you see that? 5, 0, separated by comma. 6 minus 2, 6 minus 2, 7 minus 4, 8 minus 6, and 9 minus 8 curly bracket close do you see that so in this case the solution set is an ordered pair so when we are talking about two variables solution set is an ordered pair right if it is a single variable it is like this so i hope that point is very clear second the replacement set is for only one of these variables not both so the other variable can have values which are different. Do you get an idea, right? Now, a few more things which we can add is, this forms the domain. However, the values which we got for y will be referred to as range, right, later. So we are not complicating this at present, keeping it simple, but soon we'll introduce domain and range with our examples, okay? So let's move on and do... Question number 10. Question number 10 is, find the value of k so that the ordered pair satisfies the equation x plus 5y equals to k. Ordered pair is 1, 2. So we just introduce you to the concept of ordered pair. So ordered pair basically is the solution set, right? This is the solution set. That really means that if I write this value here, equation should be true, where x is equals to 1 and y is equals to 2. So the first value is always for x, second is for y. Normally we'll write it as x and y. Is it okay? That is what it is. So we'll substitute x as 1, y as 2 and find what that is equal to. So that gives us 1 plus 5 times 2 that is 1 plus 10 and it is equals to 11 therefore k should be equal to 11 only when k is 11 this is the solution set right so if i substitute i get k equals to 11 so the equation should have been x plus 5y equals to 11 for that to be the solution set right so in this particular case we know that k should be 11 for the given solution set. Is that clear? Right? Okay. Question number 11. I have taken a variety here just to give you an exposure of what we are getting into. Uh, some of you might feel that few questions are slightly difficult, but go through it once. It is not, uh, you know, we'll take up many examples which will make them very simple as we move along. Question 11. 
Sketch the solution of x plus y greater than 10 if both x and y are real numbers. So now the solution set is real numbers. So that means all real numbers which are represented by a number line is possible for x. Is it okay? So when this kind of a question is there, we are looking for a graph. So let me sketch a graph where we are saying x plus y should be greater than 10. So we can actually get x and y intercepts to make it simple. How do we sketch this graph? You can take some values of x. We know x is any real number. If I take x as 0, so what we will do here is we can make a table. That's a good idea. So, so we can make a table here, x and y. So if I take value of x as 0, what will make it equal to 10? Let us see that. Uh, so we are actually working on, on an equation x plus y equals to 10 for these values. So for, I mean 10, so if x is 0, y should be 10. And if x is, if y is 0, x should be 10. So that becomes x and y intercepts, right? So let's say this point is 10 here. And this point is also 10. Is it okay? Then the graph of a line which represents x plus y is kind of like this. Is it okay? So this line actually represents uh, x plus y equals to 10, right? What are we interested in? We are interested in greater than 10. We are interested in x plus y greater than 10, right? Not equal to 10. So what we do here is we do not include the line. So I'm showing this dotted, right? So I mean dashed line. Do not include this, but include everything to the right side of this, right? Root include everything to the right side of it. And some of the times we make arrows, but not necessary. Is it okay? It's good, but not necessary, right? So, so everything on top of this line is the solution set for an inequality with two variables. Is that okay? So we have taken good examples here with two variables also, which we'll separately do later. But that is to give you an idea of how to work with open sentences with single variable as well as two variables, right? Okay, so let's move on. And now we are almost at the end. The last question here is question number 12. I have 85 cents in dimes and quarters. Find the solution set. So we have dimes and quarters as a replacement set. Unlimited number, right? Any number of dimes and sets. I have 85 cents in dimes and quarters. Find solution set. So as you have seen, most of the time, we had been making tables to find solution set. And that's always a good idea, right? So what we are doing here is we are seeing that we have dimes and <coughs> quarters, right? So so we could have dimes. Dimes means 10 cents. Dimes means 10 cents and quarters means 25 cents, correct? We have to add them to get 85 cents. We want 85 cents. That's what we need. Since dimes is 10, we definitely need one quarter to make 85. So one idea is that you could have one quarter. So we have 25 cents. Six dimes are needed to make it 85. Is it okay? That is one solution. Correct. If I have two quarters, it makes it 50 cents. We'll never make 85. We could make 80 or 90, but not 85. So the other thing we could have is three quarters, which is 75 and one dime. So these are the two solution sets, right? Now here we are writing dimes first and quarters later. So I can actually write solution as six dimes and one quarter. 
the other one is one dime and three quarters do you see that so that becomes my solution set so where the first number here is representing dimes and the second number is representing number of quarters I mean number of dimes and number of quarters which will give you 85 cents so we have two possible combinations and that forms our solution set is that clear to you All right so while working with two variables at times it could be tricky but sometimes you may have to work with three variables so we have a bonus question for you here it says I have 85 cents in nickels dimes and quarters right so make a table like this for nickels dimes and quarters this time and add it to so we are talking about five cents right okay I wrote zero first so zero five cents is nickels and ten cents is dimes twenty five cents is quarters but you have to get a sum of 85 right sum of 85 let me write here 85 cents and figure out how many coins of each and what combinations can give you and you have to write your solution set in curly brackets right where each will give you a number of nickels numbers of dimes and number of quarters is it okay likewise so I hope you got the concept try to do this question on your own Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and I hope you find algebra interesting. Not, much, not so difficult anymore. If you like and subscribe my videos, that will be great. Thank you and all the best.